Hello everybody, Christy Rice here. And this time around, I'm doing something a little different. I'm going to be showing you some amazing techniques using a couple different brushes, three brushes in fact. Um, right now I'm holding the uh, Rosemary brushes, triangular in a size, let's see here, what size is this? Number 10. Uh, we're gonna be using that. We're gonna be using also my favorite, the uh, Royal and Langnickel Majestic Mini Dagger in a quarter inch size. Um, and we're also going to use, coming up next, a University, Windsor & Newton's uh, University Series number two round brush. Uh, excuse me, actually, I think it's going to be a number four. Anyway, uh, doing something a little different because I've been asked this a lot. Uh, you know, how to use your brushes, how to get the most out of your brushes. As you can see, this is a well-loved brush here. This is the Windsor & Newton University Series. How to use different pressure to get the most out of a single brush. Um, how to use the tip versus the side of the brush and so on and so forth. So I want to use the back side pages from um, the uh, Christie's Cutting Garden. And of course, painterly days, you can use the interior pages uh, to do some exercises like I'm starting here. So I'm using the University Series number four brush. And then just with different pressure, you'll notice different pressure, using the tip, using the side, um, different motion. I am making a ton of different brush strokes. So I'm um, just giving you a little peek into what I'm gonna go into more depth uh, later on in the video here. Uh, so three different brushes, just using pressure and different areas and edges of the brush, we're gonna see how much we can get out of these beautiful brushes. And, and really, I think you're gonna realize in the end, if you have one good solid brush that you love, 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 you can uh, just paint a lot with that one, one brush. You don't have to invest in a ton of different brushes and have this huge arsenal of brushes. Um, the one I'm holding now is the Rosemary Triangular Brush. This is a newer brush for me, and I am absolutely in love with it. The bristles actually form uh, a, a dimensional triangle, if you can take a look there. So you can get really broad strokes by using the side. You can get um, strokes that in, literally one simple stroke look like a leaf. Um, the tip is very, very fine. You'll see here as I lift up and reduce my pressure, it's a very fine tip. This brush has just been blowing me away. Uh, love it, love it so, so much. Um, just gonna keep laying down some strokes here. And as you can see, you can just do so much with this. So the thing with your brushes, it's all about, of course, the size, um, the number you'll see on the side of the brush, that's your size. It's also about the shape of the brush and, and what kind of point the bristles come to. Some brushes, they don't come to a point. Um, some have a broad side and some have also a point. Um, so it really depends on the shape of the brush. And then the last thing that it depends on really um, is, is the pressure that you're putting on this brush. So one brush can do a ton of different things as you can see here. Um, just by changing the angle or the pressure that you use the brush with. So keep that in mind as we're going along here. And again, this uh, video today is all about um, exercising. It's not about creating a finished piece, not at all. We're not going to be painting in the watercoloring books today. I just did want to make mention that I am using the back side of the Christie's Cutting Garden pages because they are blank on the back. Um, and I'm using the back side of them to show you, number one, that you can use those areas in those books once you get your hands on them for practice and they won't bleed through. Um, and of course, to just really explore some practice. Uh, practice is so important and I know it at times can feel like a chore. We don't want it to feel like a chore, so I encourage you to practice in short bursts. Um, you know, five minutes filling a page with different brush strokes using a different brush. And guys, here I am using uh, my dagger brush, the quarter inch dagger. This has been a longtime favorite of mine. <clears throat> So much so that I think we're driving the company nuts because they're getting bought out all over the world. People are actually having a really hard time finding them. So um, we're actually trying to contact the company to see if we can get our hands on a big quantity of them and just start selling them through our website. But anyway, that's an aside. Um, this is a long-standing favorite brush of mine. Um, and it is one that you can get a ton. Look at that. 
Look at that right there. Just have some different colors on your brush and you have instant leaves. Um, and I'm not much for kind of this formulaic one stroke painting. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. You know, you can do some beautiful things just by, you know, switching up and, and um, putting some marks down on the page. I am for painting in a way where you're really looking and you're seeing and you're trying to create a shape um, that's in front of you. But when you have a brush that can do some really cool things and can do them quickly, it's only going to help you. It's only going to empower you when you paint. So, uh, you know, again, I'm not into one stroke painting. Don't, don't misunderstand, but I am into using a really powerful brush that can do a lot. So we're going to jump into the full exercise here. Uh, I am using my core watercolors. Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I have been in search of what I'm calling the 100 color palette. Um, I have recently invested in core, um, which claim to be kind of the modern watercolor and they've been really interesting so far. So as I mentioned, I am in the cutting garden series of books. I'm painting on the back side of the mushrooms here. And uh, as you'll see a little bit later on, um, you're going to see no bleed through there at all. So you don't have to be afraid to practice in these books. You don't have to wonder if it's going to inhibit your ability to use the page um, on the other side later on. Uh, it, it will not. So it's really fantastic to have that practice room. So going back to the brushes that we're using, again, it's the Rosemary uh, Brush tri Triangular Option and um, the Windsor and Newton University series, and of course the dagger. So three different brushes. Um, so, and my hope for you here, uh, you know, beyond just encouraging you to practice a little bit, and again, don't feel like you have to practice for hours and hours and hours, but br mark making with different brushes is really helpful and informative and insight, you know, gives you insight into how you like to paint and what materials you like best. So definitely give yourself that, that chance. So I'm just going to start here in the upper corner and I am literally, I'm just playing around. I'm playing around mostly with pressure and lifting the brush off the page. So with these marks, I'm starting um, using kind of the shortest edge of the triangle on this brush. And I'm pressing down quickly, lifting up, pressing down, lifting up, pressing down harder, lifting up. And what I'm getting is kind of a leaf shape. So that's really, you know, useful, incredibly useful, obviously. Just go in here and don't worry about which color you're using. Don't feel like you have to load multiple colors on the brush. Um, you certainly can, but don't worry about it too much. Now I've gone on and I'm just starting to make some random marks. Uh, I'm, I'm lifting up, I'm using more of the, the point of my brush, seeing if I can make straight marks, curved marks, um, you know, starting really thick, pulling down and making a thin mark, but keeping it straight and not so much looking like a leaf. So just encourage yourself. There's no real formula here. It's not like I want you to make leaf marks and then, you know, twig marks and berry marks. No, I want you to just mark make in your book. Just make some random marks and try to make the marks look as different as possible from the previous one you just made. So the point is to just see what you can get out of the brush. I've moved on to the Windsor & Newton brush here. And guys, traditionally, you know, this is a traditional round brush. It's just a pointed brush with, a, you know, a nice skinny uh, collection of, of bristles. Uh, but if you really play around with the pressure on this kind of brush, meaning get the color on there and then really, really press hard, you'll be surprised, I think, to see how thick of a mark you can make out of a brush that is really not that thick. Um, I'm making a lot of leaf shapes here. I'm seeing, you know, I'm putting like two strokes down, one right next to the other, um, and seeing what that looks like. And I'm just continuing on. And notice, I'm making these marks really close to one another. My goal here is to fill this entire page. Um, this entire page filling it will probably take me about... Oh, 12 to 15 minutes, give or take. 
Um, and that can be a good goal if you tell yourself you want to practice mark making, let's say once a week. Uh, you can say, okay, my goal isn't a time goal necessarily. Make your goal a, a page fill goal. So I'm going to fill the backside of an eight and a half by 11. And I'm not going to stand up unless, you know, I don't know, kids crying or the house is on fire until I am done with that page. Um, I, sorry, that's a bad joke, but um, I kind of have a dry sense of humor. So anyway, the, the point is, is just commit to that time. Fill that page. Um, swap up your colors because like I always say, a paint in a way that makes you and encourages you to want to paint more. So if I'm going to sit here and fill a whole page with green, you bet your butt I'm going to get bored, right? So I'm switching it up and I'm immediately going to yellow. So switch it up for yourself. And you're going to see at the end of this page, to be quite honest, um, and maybe I think too highly of my work, but no, anyway, um, at the end of this page is actually going to be really cool looking. So who knows? You might want to if you don't like what you paint on the back, the mushrooms are on the back of this one, or if you're practicing just on a random watercolor page, you might really like the way this looks at the end and you wanna make a card out of it or frame it. You'll be shocked, it's really cool, especially if you're switching up your colors as you go. So I am using, again, my Winsor & Newton. Um, Winsor & Newton University Series is a great brush. Uh, it's actually the, the only brush that our team um, at Momental Designs, you guys might be familiar with my business, Momental Designs, where we hand paint wedding invitations um, and we're painting thousands and thousands of pieces a week and it's the only brush we use in a couple different sizes. It's a very resilient brush, it lasts forever, it keeps a great point forever and as you can see here, it makes incredibly thin, thin lines. It, it's an easy brush to control. Um, I love this technique here that I'm doing right now where I'm making really thin lines in almost like a directional way. Um, that can be really fun to see how close you can get super skinny lines, how fast you can do them. Um, there's something called muscle memory and I don't want to get too much into the uh, science of it, but calligraphers talk about it a lot. And to me what it means, and you guys can tell me I'm wrong um, because I'm wrong a lot, but to me muscle memory is all about kind of exercising your hand and kind of getting that hand-eye coordination going so you have this really kind of graceful vibe going on between your brain and your hand and the brush you're using. Um, so having really good muscle memory is it means you're going to be able to make really confident strokes fairly efficiently and and get a beautiful result um, so practice that practice making really thin lines close to one another and speed up as you go without reloading the brush it's really fun and it's really exciting to see you know how you can start making directional lines and 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 then of course you start thinking well this could be really cool contour lines for a flower petal or for a leaf um, so I'm uh, back to my triangular brush here just really playing with the thickened thin and pressing and releasing so keep that in mind especially if you've just started painting and you really not painted much before pressure is such a huge thing and it's not something that as a beginner we think a lot about um, you really have to make a, a distinct connection between your hand and the page and the, the amount of pressure that you apply, you can see there quick guys, no bleed through whatsoever. Um, the pressure that you apply can completely change, number one, how much pigment or color is being laid down on the page. And of course, the thickness of the line. And the really cool thing is, and I remember, I think I had this epiphany. Now, I've been painting for a very long time. I had this epiphany, epiphany when I was a teenager sometime where I could make a line with my brush and without picking up the brush, I could change the shape and press down and lift up and press down and lift up like I'm doing right there. And my line could be all different widths. And I remember thinking, wow, I must be a real moron. I didn't figure this out sooner. Um, but it, it can be kind of cool to do pages like this again because you, you start to think in a different way. You start, you don't have a flower to fill in. You don't have a mushroom to make look like a mushroom. You're not worrying about choosing the right colors for a salamander and you really wanna get it right. No, you're just making marks. It's just you, the paint, and the brush 
and your hand. That's it, that's all that's going on here. So it kind of frees your mind up to notice other things and that's what I love. Here I'm making little brushy marks in different directions, almost like a fan shape. That's a really great exercise to see if you can make these marks and kind of have all of the ends come to a point. That's a really great exercise for your hand. Um, I love that and you'll see a little bit later on I'll be filling those in in an interesting way and just make those marks thin 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 as close as you can get them to one another without touching um, you're not gonna do it perfect I didn't do it perfect there but look at those lines that's grass that's really cool if you did that those lines I just made around the center of an anemone those are stamens um, here's some beautiful petals. Here's some beautiful ocean waves, okay? So start to look at these marks on your page now and say, oh my gosh, I can create real things with these. And so you're building up an arsenal of brush strokes. So like I said earlier, you don't need to build up an arsenal of brushes, but you certainly want to build up an arsenal of brush strokes. I love that. Like I literally just came up with that. <laughs> But it's a good point. You don't need an arsenal of brushes, but you do need an arsenal of brush strokes. Now look at those tiny marks I'm making. So all along here, I've been making kind of leafy marks and, and, and lines and different things like that. So how about going through and making some really tiny marks? See what you can do there. Uh, I've been making a lot of vertical marks. How about make some horizontal marks? You hold your hand differently when you make horizontal marks um, and kind of be, be mindful of that and aware of that and see how that feels with the brush in your hand. Okay, so we're gonna continue on here. This page may look full, friends, but it really isn't. It really isn't full, so I'm gonna keep going, just cleaning my brushes here figuring out my game plan. I hope you're enjoying this so far. Um, I hope it's not too boring. <laughs> um, going back here to the dagger brush, and I am literally gonna fill in every little nook and cranny, every single one, guys. Um, so just keep filling, change up your colors as you go. All right. I want you to notice now that some areas are dry. Go back in with a darker color and see how thin, long lines look over top of big, broad brush strokes that you made previously. So that can be a really cool exercise to just intermingle some different, um, different types of marks. Just be sure that if you're going off over top of an older mark that it is dry or you may not get kind of the exact look that you want. You may not see what you're looking for, um, if that makes sense. Um, start to make lines that look like details of a, of a uh, flower petal. Uh, I did mention before that this page is all about kind of the abstract. It's not about creating something that is recognizable, but once you get towards the end of your practice page and you've had some epiphanies about what these marks look like, start playing that out and seeing what seeing what can come of it as you can see at the top here i added some marks to my original uh brush strokes above that look like leaves and i will show you a detail of that um, in a few minutes i'm going back in here with a green an obvious green and i'm trying to fill in between these very thin lines i am view using the lightest lightest of pressure if you've watched my videos before notice my pinky my pinky is the only thing resting on the page right now it's actually resting on the palette um, use that technique i'm going to zoom in here um, i'm hovering my uh, thumb and my pointer finger that are holding the brush above the page by resting my pinky on the page. It gives you kind of uh, some structure. Doing the same thing here with the yellow, filling in those little kind of shrubbery marks that I made before. Again, this is all in the name of exercise um, and seeing how detailed you can get, seeing um, how you can fill in areas, challenging yourself to fill in to tiny areas building up that muscle memory, building up kind of that strength in your hand. I mean, look at that. How do I hold my brush? Ask yourself the question. How do I hold my brush in a way that I can fill in between those orange lines and not have them just go all over the place? 
How do I get control? These are the things you're asking yourself and you're thinking in your head as you're filling practice pages like this. I'm going horizontal here. How do you have to hold your brush so that you make a thin line, but you're holding and moving your brush horizontally? Um, you'll figure that out as you make those marks. Guys, this is a great exercise. Um, the bigger marks can be easily done in the car if you're driving, if you don't get car sick. Now these tinier marks might be more difficult, but if you wanna practice big marks and see, I didn't like that mark and I made note of it because you can refer back to this page and see things that you didn't like. So if you don't like something, put a little X through it. Remind yourself you didn't like it. Just continuing on here, um, filling in areas, uh, making this into kind of a cool pattern page. Um, but these practice moments, you know, these are really accessible moments. Um, keep a small kit in your car. If you're waiting to get your car washed, you're gonna have 10 minutes to practice like this. Um, take a small kit with you to the restaurant. Husband feeds the kids, you paint a little bit. I've done it, I've done it. Husband doesn't like it so much, but he'll, he'll, he'll deal, he'll deal, okay? Just the point is, is just make little moments for this so that your bigger moments that you have time for, for painting, you can actually be painting the real things and you don't have to be practicing. So uh, leave the practice for the small moments of your day that can tend to be wasted on the phone or on Facebook. Um, fill up those moments with your painting practice and then leave the rest of the bigger moments for the more fun stuff. Although I gotta tell you, I find this really fun. Um, I'm filling in here again with my dagger brush and look at, I am using just the tip of the dagger and I'm getting in there in those tiny little areas. Practice making tiny marks around something. That is another great way to kind of build up some great um, control with your brush. Making tiny marks in all different directions around a previous brush stroke. Love that. And again, just going around and filling in, making shapes around other shapes. What I did just there is great practice for backgrounds, especially in your watercoloring books. Um, so here's the full page, still wet. As you can see, nothing, absolutely nothing has bled through on the back. Um, I just love that about this paper. I know some of you have struggled with this paper and I'm not gonna deny that fact, but it, um, if you use it right, it works so well. And if you ever have questions about it, please don't be embarrassed to ask. But look at that page, guys, it's so cool. I promised I would zoom in here and show you some um, just close-ups of that mark making uh, that's more in line with kind of a leaf mark or shape. Um, I'm using the University Series brush here uh, and just barely touching the page. I mean, barely touching. If you're using a brush and you feel like you're getting too thick of a stroke, I tend to shy away from the University Series here to make really tiny marks, um, thin marks, because it, it just doesn't always seem to get the job done. Now, watch the triangular brush make the same kind of marks. Um, it just does phenomenal. Barely, barely touching. If you're not seeing anything come out onto the page, add some water to your brush. Still not looking dark enough, so I'm going to load up my brush with some more color. The thing about these practice pages is you want to see what you're doing, so I tend to use more high contrast colors on top of lighter. Look at that thin line. In a lot of ways, this these triangular brushes do some of the hard work for you, um, which, you know, is fine. I'm not going to get all, like, purist on you and say, no, you got to figure it out the hard way. If you can find excellent tools that make your painting experience more joyful, then why in the world not use them? Tiny, tiny, tiny lines. Tiny, isn't that gorgeous? My art teacher growing up used to make me, so if I was, for example, if I was painting a peony, she would make me keep that peony upright 
and in the right orientation at all times during my painting. I wasn't allowed to turn it around. I wasn't allowed to turn it upside down to better work an area. Um, <laughs> and I get it, I get why, but my goodness, that was hard. You'll notice here I've broken her rule. I have the page turned in a completely different angle because it's working for me and it's working for what I'm trying to do and accomplish here. So um, I encourage you, uh, my art teacher is just gonna, if she hears this, she's gonna flip out, but I encourage you to spin your page around if you need to, to get a better angle um, at what you're working on, so. Working again with the dagger brush here, which also, guys, does an incredible job with thin curved lines. Just incredible. You can't beat it. So there you have it, guys. Just a really fun way to practice. And that's really what this is all about, a little bit of practice. Because, yes, do I want you to paint just for joy's sake? Absolutely. But as you move along in this process, as you, uh, let's just say, get better and get more obsessed with watercolor, you're going to want to improve your craft. So here's a really fun, engaging way to do just that. So I encourage you to try this out. I encourage you to carve out two minutes, three minutes, five minutes to just play around with some marks and have a blast. Until next time.